With less than two months left in the 2018-19 NBA regular season, the Bucks, Raptors, and Sixers all obviously got better. While the Celtics and Warriors didn't make a move, it will be very, very interesting to see which team comes out of the East. How's it going, guys? My name's Wilson. After the Sixers acquired Tobias Harris and the Lakers failing miserably trying to get Anthony Davis, many questions remain to be seen. Here are 10 of the biggest questions after the NBA trade deadline. Let's start off with AD. What's next for Anthony Davis? The superstar big man made it clear about his intention to leave New Orleans, preferably move to a large market in LA with the Lakers still likely his preferred choice, the Clippers, Knicks, and even has some interest with the Bucks. With New Orleans rejecting the Lakers' heavy offer and with all the tampering stuff going on, it's pretty clear Dell Dems will continue to refuse to send AD to the Lakers. Will likely trade him elsewhere during the summer since they didn't even play him in the fourth quarter in a close game recently against the Timberwolves. The team wants him to be fully held so they can get the best asset in return. At this point, the Celtics have a way better chance in landing AD than LeBron does and will continue to go all out on him. For now, Davis will just have to deal with the Pelicans for the next 5 months. Are the Los Angeles Lakers officially wasting a LeBron year? I made a recent video on whether or not the Lakers will miss the playoffs. With no margin for error, instead of landing Anthony Davis, they landed Reggie Bullock and Mike Muscala, a good 3-point shooter who will help a little bit. After James's arrival to LA, Magic surrounded LeBron with non-shooters and Lane Stevenson, Michael Beasley who is now with the Clippers, and Rajon Rondo. The team is ranked in the bottom 5 in 3 point percentage. Brandon Ingram still a very inconsistent second option and is still a mystery whether he will actually develop into a star player. Knowing the team has no shot at contending in the West, it will be a question mark whether the young guys will play hard for LeBron knowing they were about to get traded. This isn't the Eastern Conference where James gets to toy with the Knicks and Magic every night, but at 34 years old and still an elite player, the clock is ticking for LeBron's career and if the Lakers can't land a superstar next season, the LeBron Laker era is in serious trouble. Will the Houston Rockets waste James Harden's best season, looking to become the first player since MJ in 1986-87? To average over 36 points in a single season, Harden scoring the ball at a rate we haven't seen since Kobe Bryant. Putting up 30 plus points for 30 straight games now, you wonder if the Rockets are putting too much load on his shoulder and if it will take a heavy toll on him come playoff time. They made minor changes, gave up James Ennis, took a chance on Iman Shumper, had to give away a lottery protected first round pick to shed the contracts of Brandon Knight and Marquise Chris who were useless. Capella's gonna miss more time while CP3 seems to be slowing down a little bit. Banged up by injuries, anything short of a conference finals would be a failure for Houston this season. Supposed to lose to a team like the Nuggets or Jazz in the second round, it would be a major disappointment. What's next for the Memphis Grizzlies? After trading Marcus Gasol and keeping Mike Conley, who they said will be a good mentor to rookie power forward Jared Jackson Jr., the team's been struggling as the 14th seed in the West won't be going anywhere this season. With the grid and grind days over, the franchise knows it's time to move on, yet don't know where to begin, which will depend on what they'll do with Conley this summer. I expect the Grizzlies to be bad for the next two years, allowing Chandler Parsons to rejoin the team's pretty much a waste. Which deal has the biggest risk of being a disaster? Tobias, Porzingis, or Gasol? The Sixers look stacked on paper, but now with another scorer in Harris, just like Jimmy Butler, there's a chance Harris won't be the best fit. Some nights he might only take 6 shots a game, others 18, but as a stretch 4, he's been an absolute killer offensively in the pick and roll, great at spotting up, and also excellent playing iso ball. While Porzingis won't likely play this season, Dallas will likely give KP Max money as a restricted free agent. There's also a slight chance he might not be as explosive after the injury but he's still only 23 years old. Gasol on the other hand will need to play well for Toronto to advance to the finals. But if Toronto collapses like previous years in the postseason, it's possible we could see Kawhi Leonard and Marc Gasol head elsewhere come free agency time. Could anything that happened at the trade deadline make Golden State nervous? It's not likely anybody in the West will beat Golden State since the Rockets are slightly worse compared to last season. While the Warriors added all-star DeMarcus Cousins last summer, a huge upgrade from Kevon Looney, which honestly isn't fair for the rest of the NBA, and are playing excellent basketball as of late, OKC might give them a run for their money, and Denver's still a young team who lacks playoff experience. The Bucks blew out the Warriors in Oracle earlier this season, now added sharpshooter Nikola Miritich. Alongside Brooke Lopez, both great three-point shooters, could the team that comes out of the East at least make it a six-game series? I can see that, but I still don't see anybody beating Golden State in a seven-game series. 
Will the New York Knicks land the first overall pick? After trading away their only all-star, the franchise has been a disaster over the last two decades. Winning one playoff series since 2001, now with the worst record in the league, unbearable and unwatchable, it's extremely important the Knicks get the opportunity to draft a once-in-a-generational type player in Zion Williamson. They desperately need to select the right guy, get somebody good in free agency, and try to do something right for once. Will Markel Fultz bounce back in Orlando? After an ugly two and a half seasons with the Sixers, it's finally time Markel Fultz will try to get his magic powers back with Orlando giving him a fresh start. There was no future for Fultz in Philly, with the team focusing on competing for a title. Being one of the main options on a bad team will allow the 21 year old guard to shine. Now starting over, once Markel gets fully healthy, that's when his NBA career will really begin. Where will Carmelo Anthony sign? Of course there will always be mellow drama until he officially retires and it's usually never good drama at this stage of his career. In an interview with Taryn Finley of the Huffington Post last Friday, Melo suggested he's at peace with the fact that he might not be able to play much longer. Being realistic with himself, currently unsigned and hasn't appeared in the game since November 8th, Melo struggled to find a home after spending his first 14 seasons with the Nuggets and Knicks. Both the Hawks and Wolves waived him, with teams bouncing him out like they're playing hot potato. According to Woj, the Lakers are expected to consider signing Anthony. Wherever he goes next, you better pray he doesn't ruin your team. Who's the second best team in the West? So far, the Denver Nuggets still have the second best record in the conference. Led by star center Nikola Jokic, averaging 20 points, 10 rebounds, almost 8 assists, with a bunch of excellent young players. But if the playoffs start today, without much experience, it won't be surprising to see the 7 seeded Spurs beat the Nuggets in a 7 game series. While OKC looks amazing this regular season with Paul George and Russell Westbrook, it's still pretty embarrassing how they lost to Utah last season, led by rookie Donovan Mitchell. Houston don't look as dominant like last year, while Portland, who's now the fourth seed, had home court advantage last season, only to get swept by the Pelicans. Every team basically between the second and seventh seed has a chance to lose in the first round, while Golden State will easily destroy the eighth seed without breaking a sweat. Thank you so much for watching this video. I talk NBA comparisons, amazing storylines, NBA history, and anything basketball that will interest you. If you love the NBA, subscribe for more content, more great stuff coming soon. See you next time.